Hey everybody, welcome back to Weld.com. So in previous videos we've talked about uh, different modes of metal transfer such as short circuit, uh, pulse spray, a regular spray. Today we want to kind of show you the difference between the three. We've always told you that uh, short circuit is kind of limited to 5 sixteenths material and less because it is prone to lack of fusion. That's one of the reasons it's, it's not considered pre-qualified by D11. What do we do when we have to weld thicker stuff and we still want to use like a 70S6 wire? One of the things we can do is get into a spray transfer, meaning we change the composition of the gas to 82% argon and higher, or higher, uh, and with the balance of it being CO2. That's gonna put us into a true spray transfer, but what happens when we have to go out of position? Because spray transfer is limited to flat grooves and horizontal and flat fillets. So one thing we can do to get out of position, so vertical overhead, you know, because sometimes you just, it's not feasible to rotate things or get them into a, a flat or horizontal position, one thing we can do is switch over to a pulse spray transfer, which uh, essentially it's a pulsed arc. We're still on the DC uh, reverse reverse polarity, or DC positive. We're still on that, that part of the cycle, but we're going to pulse the arc. So it's a very rapid increase and decrease in amperage as we're welding. So that allows us to have a little bit more control over that puddle versus it falling back out on us. So today we're just gonna kind of show you the difference between the three. We'll run some short circuit, a little bit of pulse spray, and then we're gonna go ahead and just for uh, giggles and grins, we're gonna go ahead and run some vertical spray transfer and just see how that works out for us. Uh, once we get done, we're gonna go ahead and do a cut and etch on the pulse spray and the short circuit transfer. Both are gonna be done on a single plate. We're gonna run one, let it cool in between, run the other side, and then um, show you the difference in a cut and etch. So let's go ahead and get it to it. We're going to be using the new uh, PowerMeg 253 DPI from Everlast. Uh, we're going to run for the short circuit. As far as wire, we're going to be running some 70S6 from SelectArc, uh, solid MIG wire, 035 diameter. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so we're running a typical spray transfer in the 2F position or horizontal flat position. This is where it performs really well. Uh, you can see we got a nice fluid puddle, everything's going smooth, it performs really well in this position on thicker materials. Now let's go ahead and throw it in vertical and see why we'd want to switch over to a pulse transfer instead, or pulse spray transfer instead. All right, so as you can see, here's our regular spray transfer in the 2F position or horizontal. Uh, turned out really good. Equal leg lengths, everything wetted in really well, good depth of fusion, didn't have any issues. Uh, as soon as we took it out of position, so we started from uh, the bottom here and worked our way up, the puddle was just really hard to control. I mean, it looked like it was going good under, underneath the hood, but what I couldn't see on the other side of my nozzle is it was all pouring out from underneath me. So this stuff is, yeah, it's not recommended in vertical and overhead for a reason. I'm not even gonna attempt to do this in overhead because I don't wanna catch this stuff all over my body and burn it up again. Um, yeah, so let's see what we can do. Let's see how to, how to apply this spray transfer in the vertical position using a pulse. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get set up for the pulse spray transfer. Once again, we're gonna be running in the vertical position, same wire, the SelectArc 70S6 035. Um, we are switching out our gas now, so we're running the 92% argon, 8% CO2. Uh, we are switched over to the, uh, the pulse MIG function here. The cool thing about this is I can actually just set my amps and everything else is kind of predetermined on the inside of the machine because it's in a synergic mode. Uh, another thing that it, it gives me is the option to adjust my voltage so I can actually go up or down 5 volts on here. So because I'm going in the, the vertical position, I went ahead and dropped this back about three volts. It seems to be running pretty good here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we also have inductance on here so we can actually change arc length just a little bit uh, to kind of control the fluidity of that puddle. I've got this one set at two. So let's go ahead and run it, see how she does. As far as uh, technique, I mean, everything went in there pretty smooth. I did uh, kind of bury my wire a little bit too much towards the top, got a little bit of um, 
A little bit of weld spatter, but it's only one little BB here. Was able to correct that as soon as I noticed the audible change in the uh, the pulse. As far as like going into it, what I typically do is I like to run little triangles. So as I'm making going to the apex of that triangle or the peak of the triangle, it's punching into that root, and then I'm coming back and letting everything wet and fill in on the uh, the left and right side of the toes. All right, so that's the uh, the pulse spray MIG. Uh, I noticed when I got to the top, I kind of short arced it a little bit and kind of got a little tiny little bit of spatter, but that's one of the benefits of this process is it eliminates spatter. So we don't have much post weld cleanup. Hit it with a small wire brush, knock any of the silicon deposits off of it, you should be good to go. Uh, it looked like it was going in pretty well as far as punching into the root. So what I like to do is like a little triangle. So as I'm leading forward, I'm punching into that root and then coming back over and filling and getting the, uh, the toes wetted in, making sure it flows into the plate very well. All right, now for my next trick, we're gonna go ahead and run short circuit in the vertical position. Same thickness of material. This is at room temperature, so it's cooled down. So there's no additional heat input in here. There's no preheat, none of that stuff. Just straight solid 3 8 plate, 3F joint configuration. We're gonna go ahead and weld this one out. The pulse spray is on the back side. The pulse spray we did in verticals on the back side. Once we get done, we'll go ahead and cut this in half, etch it, and see what's what. All right, so overall the weld turned out good. Uh, nice uniform bead profile. Looks like we tied in on the sides pretty well. Uh, but as we all know from previous videos, bend tests, cut etches, and all that stuff, it's not what it looks like on the outside. It's what's on the inside that counts. So let's go ahead, cut it open, polish it up, and throw some acid on it. So as you can see, we got the short circuit now on the left, spray on the right. Got a lot better penetration on the spray transfer. The short circuit looks like kind of in the, the bottom leg. There's not much punch in there, and then there's also not much punch in the root. Anytime I'm putting something, you know, thick metal together, 3 8 anything greater than that, I really want to make sure that I punch into that root, punch into the side walls, just so that, you know, nothing ever happens, the thing never comes apart. Again, short circuit's prone to lack of fusion. And you can kind of see it here in the results. I mean, it's adequate, but you know, that's not something that I would trust putting a building together or anything like that. Uh, so, I mean, you, you see, you can actually get into a pulse spray to get vertical and overhead. I mean, as you can see, there's different ways of doing things. I mean, some things are gonna work better than others. That's kind of why we do this video is everybody wants to know, hey, when should I use this process or this application? The situation is always gonna dictate. If I'm, if I'm running anything five sixteenths or less, I'll run short circuit on it all day long. You can run that uphill, downhill, doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about slag inclusions. Can you get good results in the vertical position with short circuit? Yes, if I start uh, pushing that wire to its upper limits of its current cap carrying capabilities and you have a well-seasoned welder, yes. Um, but why would I wanna do that? I have uh, an opportunity to change the process, change the mode of metal transfer, or you know, change up my gas, and then I get repeatable results for the majority of the people that are doing it. So yes, you can get lucky running short circuit in the vertical position, but it's not repetitive. You're not gonna be able to do it uh, repeatedly. So why not change it over to something that's better results? You know, it's more of a guarantee if you run it with the correct settings and the correct gas composition, you're gonna get good results every time. That's why those other processes are considered pre-qualified like gas shielded flux core or self shielded flux core, even uh, pulse spray in the vertical position. I mean, so, Think about what the task is at hand and then, you know, adjust accordingly. So hopefully that answers the, uh, a lot of questions that you guys had concerning the, the processes or the mode of metal transfers, how we get out of position when we have thicker material and we don't have short circuit. Um, you, you definitely have to invest in a different piece of equipment that is capable of doing a pulse spray transfer. Doesn't necessarily have to be a six, $7,000 machine either. As you can see, we just ran it on the Everlast over here, which is about half the cost of what you're gonna pay for another one. So if you're a home hobbyist, you're working on some thicker stuff or you're running a small business out of your shop, yes, that, that would be a great investment to get into if you wanted to run thicker material and you didn't want a, show, or a shop filled with smoke because running flux core. Not to mention flux core wire is gonna be a little bit more on the expensive side. 70S6 is more readily available. You just have to switch out your gas composition, change the mode of metal transfer, pull the trigger and get after it. So 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. Hopefully you learned something along the way. Uh, we definitely appreciate your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop any comments down in the comment section. We'll try to help you out the best we can. Until next time, make every world better than your last.